Welcome back to my channel. I'm Derek Clebarton from CodeOpinion.com. ORMs and how you persist data can have a significant impact on your design. Data is very important, but how you capture that data can often lead you down a road where you don't really realize the compromise you're making. I'm gonna show an example of how not all data is created equal. Thank you to Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, Check out the link in the description. Here's a quick Venn diagram. If you're thinking about a domain model, what do you actually care about? Well, you care about behavior and data. Well, not all data. And that's what I'm about to illustrate. So here's a really trivial example that's kind of typical. I have this warehouse product, and let's say we're using an ORM. So we have this product, which has a SKU, which would probably be the identifier, which would be the key. We have things like the product name, the description, the price, and the quantity on hand. You can imagine in the real world, this might be a lot larger and the number of properties that you're actually mapping to your underlying storage and database. Then I have things like methods because these are all private sets and these public methods to kind of set these properties. And it's all pretty trivial. And this is still kind of real world though because some of these would be trivial is that we have things like, okay, well the name can't be blank. The description, there's no, nothing here. It's just straight setting it. The price, making sure that it's greater than zero. And then we have some related to shipping the product. Okay, making sure that we have enough quantity on hand. Receiving is pretty straightforward. Doing an inventory adjustment, same type of thing. We can't do one where we end up in a negative quantity on hand. Now, the thing to point out, because we're using an RM, this is the data that we're actually mapping to our underlying database. So we have all these properties. Again, real world, there could be a lot more. But of all these in my example, which ones are actually relevant for this model? Just actually the quantity on hand because we use it when we ship product, we have some validation here, we have some logic, and when we do an inventory adjustment, we're making sure that we are uh, a positive quantity on hand. So the quantity on hand, this particular property, is the only thing really relevant for any of the behaviors that we wanna call. The rest of them are just really just basic setters for persisting data. So there's really a distinction between what changes together and what's relevant in this model. Quantity on hand is a completely different concern than the rest of it. And that's why at the beginning, I said not all data is created equal. What I really mean is that we have different utility for it. If I go back to this slide, to start to make a little bit more sense now, is that related to the behaviors that we need to invoke, we don't care about all the data, we just care about a subset of the data. And this can have a significant impact on your design. If you're only thinking about the data that you need to enforce business rules, that will make your model much slimmer, much more focused. If you have to also think about all the other data that's really unrelated, that's just setters, now you're conflating two different things together. So here's how you can have a much more focused model. I'm gonna use event sourcing as the example, but it's just an example. You don't need to be doing event sourcing to do this. I think it just illustrates this really well. You could still be using an ORM, doing exactly what you're doing now. So what's event sourcing? Just to be clear, because I'm gonna be showing some code that will illustrate this. Instead of recording current state, rather I'm just recording a series of events that gets us to where we are now. So maybe I have a product received event, uh, another product received event, a product was shipped, and then we did an inventory adjustment. So we adjusted some inventory. We're recording all these series of events to what we are getting now. That's how we're recording state is with our events. So here's a new model that really is just focused on the quantity on hand and then the behaviors that are around that. I don't have anything related anymore to the name, the description, the price. Those are separate concerns that just had simple setters to them. What I'm focused on here is really just that quantity on hand. So if I look at ship products, we're doing that validation, we're doing that logic to make sure that we can't ship more than we have. And then I'm just adding an event to our list and behind the scenes what this is doing, once we kind of add this event, this product shipped event, I'm taking it, this is gonna execute, and I'm just updating what our quantity on hand is that we're storing internally kind of in memory so that we can invoke any other uh, methods here. Same thing for a receive product. We're really not doing any logic around it. We're just saying, okay, that's happened. We're creating that event. And then we can apply it by adding that quantity on hand to uh, what we have in memory. Same thing with adjust inventory. We're doing our check and then we're adding that event and we can apply it to keep that internal, what's really called a projection in memory so we can validate whatever behaviors that we want to invoke. Now this is a trivial example, but you can probably think in your own system where if you're using an RM, you have some model that has a ton of backing properties to it and they don't really all relate to each other. And then you have some methods that are really just changing the state of some particular properties and some that have no bearing whatsoever. 
Now, is the idea that you just go and separate and turn all these into different models? No, not necessarily. Be pragmatic about this. But the gist is, is that they're not all created equal and you do not need to have one model to rule them all. You may decide, okay, I'm gonna have behaviors here because it makes sense. We have this, uh, these business logic rules that we have to enforce. And then some other parts of that model may just be crud. Not everything's created equal. Going back to this slide, what do you care about? If you're focusing on behaviors, there's only likely a subset of data that you care about. Maybe you wanna model that independently. Maybe it has different concerns. In the case of my warehouse, it really was inventory and the ways that inventory changed that we were focusing on in that model. There could be some, a separate model entirely dealing with the other portion of that, which was related to the name, the price, and maybe pricing is a whole different thing. But as I said, one model doesn't need to rule them all. Now, if you're using an ORM and you have some persistence, say a table that is mapped to one massive entity, one giant mapping related to one object, you can still apply this. You can still separate and slim down those so that you have a model that just is persisting and dealing with just certain columns of that particular table. This is still really applicable. But I do think the idea of that you just have one mapping, kind of one singular idea, can go sideways when it gets really large and there's just different concerns. And if that's been your experience, let me know in the comments. And if you wanna chat with other software developers about topics like this and software architecture and design, there's a really good community going on my Discord server. Check the links in the description on how to join. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.